In this video we're going to be unboxing the Thrustmaster TPR Pendular Rudder System and as you can tell from the size of this fish, it's an absolute chonker. Welcome back to the Game & Muscle YouTube channel. If you like simulator content, remember to click that like button, subscribe and tickle that bell a little bit. So, here they are, the Thrustmaster TPR pedals. Um, absolute beast of a packaging and uh, I'll let you in on a secret. I have used these pedals uh, a few times at a friend's house and I've used them at uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator press event. And obviously the reason why we've got these is because Microsoft have kindly thrown them at us because they want us to experience Microsoft Flight Simulator to the best of our ability to then encourage you guys to also play Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's the way the capitalist world works, but uh, I'm not complaining. You probably should. So, here's the box. Nice little printed uh, images on it. You know, who, who doesn't like a bit of box art there? I certainly do, with my life revolves around box art. Before I do open it, let's quickly read the marketing spiel off the, uh, off the back here and see if they've said anything totally ridiculous. It is a Thrustmaster box, so might have some delightful treats for you here. So, uh, revolutionary rudder mechanism. That's all right. Thrustmaster Pendule underscore RTM technology. <laughs> Unique suspended mechanism for sp smooth and fluid motion. Sounds arousing to me. Two very precise, precise differential brakes for perfectly proportioned braking. 100% metal structure. Great. 32% uh, plain bearings. I don't know how many bearings you should have on this, but there's 32 of them. Fantastic. Realistic dimensions. Metal base plate for excellent stability, even when used without a cockpit. Uh, unrivaled precision from the design of the Hotas Warthog. Heart. <laughs> Hall effect. Accurate technology. Basically, Thrustmaster just use Hall effect sensors, which is great. You do get better precision than potentiometers. They uh, you can recalibrate them each time you turn the device on. They don't wear as much because there's no actual con physical contact between the thing that's moving and the thing that's picking the, the movement up. Um, no, Hall Effect's great. I don't know why they've branded it as their own special thing, but whatever, you know. 16-bit uh, precision on three axes. The magnets ensure ultra-precise frictionless action. Built-in electronics. Springs. Position can be adjusted and fine-tuned to the resistance according to your preferences. Great. A lot of customization available with these. Um, basically, so you can spend more time messing around with uh, the, the customizing of them instead of actually playing the games or simulating. Target programming software. Thrustmaster Advanced Programming Graphical Editor. This is basically just their driver software allows you to adjust everything visually. Nice. And uh, then exactly the same stuff written in French, which I'm not going to attempt to read. So, well, let's get this out of the box and uh, see how it's going in here. Thrustmaster have this obsession with bloody foam. Um, you know, come on. Come on, Thrustmaster. <laughs> it makes your products look cheaper than they actually are. But here we go, it's all like, it's, all, it's like a Eskimo's house, trapped. And we're going to release the Eskimo. What's this in the bottom here? I oh, know, here we go, we've got the pedals hidden at the side. They're proper chonky, that's nice. And hopefully, we can wobble all this out without breaking anything. Right, look at that. Bit of kit. It has been, this has been nicely protected by the packaging. Yeah, there's no, there's no like dents or dings or anything. It all looks absolutely mint. But this look, you know, this looks proper legit. Super, super solid. It's quite a beasty, quite a beasty unit though. So a lot of height to it. So if you've got other pedals, like you probably see ones like the uh, MFG Crosswinds and even the, the, the lower end Thrustmaster pedals, a lot of them are very flat on the floor, which you'll probably find easier if you're gonna put them on like a sim rig or you're just integrating them into your like uh, underneath your desk or something. This is obviously going to stick out, so that's worth considering. But uh, presumably, the pendulum motion and effect is uh, you know if you're getting these, that's what you're going for. So that's the compromise. I mean, you can't you can't have the pendulum effect without a pendulum. They've got to be hanging from something. Nicely, they've table uh, table tied. That is not how that word works. Cable tied. These on there, so uh, this isn't gonna flop around in the uh, post, but that's pretty legit, they look nice. They look very uh, 
mechanical, sort of a very very like a what like American military in uh, style. But yeah, the package basically just consists of the these. The, the, the actual main pendulum unit and the two uh, pedals and then just a USB cable so it'll just be p uh, powered by the USB which uh, I think that's great you don't really want separate power cables I certainly don't it's just a case of uh, attaching these together okay so the pedals have been attached and uh, that's it the unit is ready to go effectively you just need to plug in the USB cable no power needed sorted uh, I will say in order to attach the uh, the actual brake pedals, the screwing in of the pedals is perfectly uh, straightforward and as it's described in the instructions. But the brake arm that allows it to actually detect the uh, the motion of the brake, um, there's these little bits on it that in the instructions are pre-rotated around in the right direction. But out of the box, they're facing forwards rather than sideways. So you actually have to rotate each one. But you wouldn't know to do that because it doesn't say in the instructions. So Come on, Thrustmaster, get them out of the factory rotated the correct way, or at least make the instructions a bit more clear. But unless you're completely brain dead, that shouldn't be a problem. And uh, only took two or three minutes, and uh, that's it, ready to go. And of course, they do have all the tools and everything in there for you to, to do it nice and easy without having to search for through your toolkit to get the right size, tiny, tiny Allen keys. Oh, actually, there was one other thing as well. The screws for the back of the brake pedal to attach it again to the uh, to the brake detector uh, you only have one screw on each one there's this there's like a set pin and a screw whereas in the instructions it says there's there's two screws there, there are two screws there's one screw on each pedal not two on each pedal so again minus points for the instructions there but you know it's not going to move it's all solid it's all fine you just have to use two of your three brain cells in my case and it's all good but but there we go guys um I have to say it looks absolutely superb. I know that this is fantastic to use because I have used them before, but uh, really nice that you can just dial it in. I mean, that's what you're paying for with something like this, the ability to actually be able to dial it all in. Uh, you can see on the back here, you've got the two springs there, so you can adjust how the tension works, uh, if it's like a linear tension or if it gradually gets more, more, more tense um, and, and how strong it is. Uh, in, in a real plane, the faster you go, the more resistance there typically is on the rudder pedal pedals as the wind is pushing on. You know, there's more air pressure to push against the uh, the rudder as you move it. Um, from my experience, also, the more you, it's harder to push more on the pedal, uh, it, get, it gets gradually harder to push it because you're deflecting it more. Again, you're probably increasing the amount of pressure on the rudder. Um, of course, when you're on the ground, depending on the aeroplane, you use the rudder pedals to steer the front, the, the nose wheel, and it feels different again. <laughs> so, you know, really, if you wanted absolute realism from your rudder pedals, you're probably going to need force feedback because you can only configure these in one way, and it's always going to be like that. Uh, I think it's probably a little bit overkill, but, you know, it depends how crazy you want to go with your simulation. Um, but the actual quality and everything of this, you know, absolutely chunky, feels really really solid it is an expensive product but it feels and looks like you're actually getting uh, value for money combine that with the ability to just dial these in however you want is uh, you know that's what, that's what you're paying for as i keep saying so yeah i mean i'm gonna be really excited to try these on the on the sim rig i'm not quite sure how we're going to fit them into the sim rig <laughs> it's getting a bit cramped on the floor with all the pedal plates i might have to get some kind of slider so i don't know when we're going to get it on there but uh, this is going to take the immersion up a notch. So, uh, thank you guys for watching this unboxing video. I know how exciting unboxing videos are. They're some of the best videos on YouTube, I have to say. Uh, but if you enjoyed this, click that like button. And, of course, subscribe and click that little bell thing. Uh, otherwise, YouTube doesn't notify anyone. Um, and also, ask any questions in the comment section for when we actually do do a review of this. Um, I like to do reviews after we've really tested stuff for a long period of time. I don't feel like you can really review something by just using it for a few hours. I feel like I have to basically destroy it or see if it can survive. <laughs> if it can survive me, then normally it's an okay product. So we won't do a review for a while, but, you know, there we go, guys. Um, until the next one, thank you for watching, happy tea drinking, and goodbye, everyone. <laughs>